Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. And we are meeting once again with lecture 31st of modern novel, that is novel 2. And this lecture is going to be second last lecture of our revision series where we are revising our text for um, prepare them to um, um, for the preparation of final examination. And in today's lecture, what we are going to revise, we are going to revise Virginia Woolf's masterpiece to the lighthouse. All right. Um, so today's lecture is going to be a comprehensive talk on to the lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. Well, starting this lecture from the scratch, I'll try to make you recall all what we covered so far in this um, in the discussion uh, related to the novel by Virginia Woolf. And uh, to do that, I'll try to bring in the discussion about the author as well as about the product that she produced. The novel is highly um, autobiographical, like um, in, the, in our previous lecture, we discussed a novel by James Joyce, a portrait that is again an autobiographical novel. So um, you will find this, this, this is common between James Joyce's novel of a portrait and Virginia Woolf's novel to the lighthouse, and both are famous for the, for the use of technique um, that is stream of consciousness. Uh, and both authors belong to the same group of intellectuals of uh, Bloomsbury group. So uh, the, this is uh, something common in the, in the text that we uh, read um, by both of these authors. The novel is based on her childhood um, recollections of holidays in Cornwall, which becomes an isle in the, in the um, in Hebrides in the novel. There are close links between Virginia's childhood and the lighthouse. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Ramsey and their relationship, Virginia's own father and mother. Um, so you can, uh, you can see that the autobiographical, autobiographical novel by James Joyce has resemblance, a lot of resemblance uh, and recollection from his childhood. And this novel by Virginia Woolf again is a kind of same canvas that presents Virginia's childhood. And what are the matter of uh, um, this uh, comparison is the Virginia's father and mother's resemblance with Mr. and Mrs. Ramsey, premature death of Mrs. Ramsey, death of her mom, death of one of Ramsey's children in war, and death of Victoria's own brother. Uh, Virginia writes this novel prompted by a deep psychological urge to distance herself from obsession of her childhood memories. Memories eliminate uh, element in the novel, however, are transformed and take on a symbolical and universal value. It, it's in the center of the novel and has a symbolic rule. Um, its alternation of light and darkness represents the contradictory aspects of life. So it's, it's highly symbolic and, uh, symbolical in nature. In fact, as the sea, it reflects in the first part the situation of happiness and enjoyment of the character. Then in the second one, the destructive aspect symbolizes the pain of the family. Um, the novel published in 1927 um, is, is sandwiched between Virginia Woolf's other two most famous novels, Mrs. Dalloway in 1925 and Orlando 1928. Well, commonly um, understood, Wolf is totally at her best here in this novel, that is, um, to the lighthouse, as she engages with ongoing themes of memory, family, and fiction. To the Lighthouse takes on some elements of Wolf's own life, as I just mentioned. She felt um, stifled by her father um, in much the same way that Mr. Ramsey squeezes the life out of his children. And the sudden deaths of her mother and her sister, Stella, um, left her in deep mourning. Echoes from Mrs. Ramsey and Prue's deaths in to the lighthouse. But Wolf herself um, got fed up with critiques um, 
who insisted on reading the Ramses as direct representation of the Stephen's Stephen was was um, maiden name to the lighthouse is also an extended meditation on the relationship between art and life and on late Victorian family structures well um, what makes the lighthouse important in literary terms is Wolf's ambitious formal experimentation. Uh, now, what is that experimentation? She's really working her signature style in this novel as she takes two days separated by ten years to evoke a whole picture of the Ramsey family life. Her writing style is quite different and unique in this in in this writing as well as in her other writings, and she's she's known for her unique writing style. Her run-on sentences and uh, and uh, mentoring paragraphs work to replicate what her characters are thinking in addition to what they are doing. Uh, you were definitely able to recall what we discussed in our last lecture regarding James Joyce writing. Um, with the pace, uh, you will see the main character developing. Uh, this is the same way, same style. The writer develops his writing um, uh, through the the novel moves and functions. So initially, when when um, the protagonist is young, you will find his his words and phrases keeping that immaturity. However, soon it becomes and represents that maturity that is shown by writer's age and his experience, um, the character's age and experience. Well, same is the case with Virginia Woolf that you will find that unique writing style that aptly coordinates with uh, the technique stream of consciousness that she wants to represent. She's a great example of um, the show Don't Tell School of Narration. Instead of sketching us a stiffly realistic portrait of her characters, Wolf goes for the emotional impact of their internal landscapes. Now, uh, having this brief um, I would say a recap of uh, Wolf's writing style and something about the story. Now we need to understand and we need to recall our plot summary line to um, just go through uh, what the story is about. Well, uh, if you look at the plot of the summary, part one spans approximately seven hours and takes up more than half the book. Well, hats off to Virginia Wolf. It's set uh, at the Ramsey summer home where the Ramsey and their eight children are and entertaining um, a number of friends and colleagues for their summers. The novel begins with James Ramsey, age six, waiting to go to the lighthouse that's across the bay from the Ramsey summer home. His mother, Mrs. Ramsey, holds out hope that the weather will be good tomorrow so they can go to the lighthouse, but Mr. Ramsey is adamant that the weather will be awful. Charles Tensley, one of Mr. Ramsey's visiting students, chimes in and supports Mr. Ramsey's view that the weather will be rotten. He's a very socially awkward young man who is obsessed with his dissertation. Well, numerous small bits of action occur. For example, after lunch, Mrs. Ramsey takes pity on Mr. Tansley and asks him to accompany her into town. By the end of the trip, Mr. Tansley is in love with the much older but still beautiful Mrs. Ramsey. By the way, she is 50 at that time. Later, as she sits in a window and reads a fairy tale to James, Mrs. Ramsey remembers that she must keep her head down for Lily Briscoe's painting. If you are wondering whose Lily is, we are in the same boat uh, so far um, while reading the story. Although we, gathers, we gather she is a family friend that comes every summer um, to, the, to the summer house to spend uh, her vacation with the family. Mrs. Ramsey as the, the fleeting thought that Lily will have a hard time getting married, but she likes Lily anyway and decides that Lily should marry William Banks, an old friend of Mr. Ramsey's. William Banks, who is also visiting the Ramsey's, comes up to Lily and the two of them go for a walk. 
They talk about Mr. Ramsey. Meanwhile, Mr. Ramsey walks along the lawn and worries about mortality and his legacy to humankind. And then pesters Mrs. Ramsey to soothe his ego. Mrs. Ramsey does calm her husband and then starts worrying about Paul, the Ramsey's guest. Minta, another guest, Nancy Ramsey, um, daughter, and Andrew, son, who are not yet back from the beach. She hopes that Paul has proposed to Minta. At dinner, Mrs. Ramsey triumphs. The food is delicious. She is beautiful. Mr. Banks has stayed for dinner and Paul's proposal to Minta has been accepted. She wishes she could freeze the moment but knows it is already part of the past. She tucks her youngest two children into bed and then sits with her husband as he reads. They make small talk and she knows he wants her to say that she loves her she loves him though she refuses plainly she gets out of it by smiling at him and telling him that he was right the weather will be bad tomorrow and they will not be able to visit the lighthouse part 2 compresses 10 years into about 20 pages what a contrast and what a what a what a intelligent way of doing what she wants to all the traditionally important information in a story um, read what happened to the characters is briefly imparted in brackets. We learn that Mrs. Ramsey, Prue Ramsey, the daughter of the family, and Andrew Ramsey, the son, they have died. Mrs. Ramsey died out and died at night. Prue died in, in childbirth after first getting married, and Andrew died when a shell exploded in France. Well, um, so here we have the glimpses of World War I as well. There also happens to be war going on, which gets glossed over in favor of extended description of the weather and the summer house. Part 3 takes place at the summer house and begins with Mr. Ramsey and two of his children, Cam and James, finally going to the lighthouse and Lily working on the painting of Mrs. Ramsey that she never finished. Via Lily's thoughts, uh, we hear that she never married but remained good friends with William Banks. Paul and Minta's marriage fell apart. Mr. Ramsey, Cam and James actually make it to the lighthouse. Lily finishes her painting. Throughout his, this last part of the novel, it's clear that Mrs. Ramsey is sorely missed by the family members. And this is all about the plot outline um, of To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. Now we'll quickly go through the main characters to see who are the characters playing their role um, to uh, give a finish to the story. Well, starting with Mrs. Ramsey's character, who is the, who's the most important character in the story. She's Mr. Ramsey's wife, a beautiful and loving woman, um, and is a wonderful hostess who takes pride in making memorable experiences for the guest at the family summer house on the Isle of Skye. Affirming traditional gender roles wholeheartedly, she lavishes particular attention on her male guest, who she believes have delicate egos and need constant support and sympathy. Well, she's a dutiful and loving wife, but often struggles with her husband's difficult moods and selfishness. Without fail, however, she triumphs through these difficult times and demonstrates an ability to make something significant and lasting from the most um, ephemeral of circumstances such as dinner party. Mr. Ramsey's character um, is important too. Um, he is a prominent metaphysical philosopher and he loves his family but often acts like something of a tyrant. He tends to be selfish and harsh due to his persistent personal and professional anxieties. He fears more than anything that his work is insignificant in the grand scheme of things and that he will not be remembered by future generations because he hasn't done anything like that. Well, aware of how blessed he is to have such a wonderful family, he nevertheless tends to punish his wife children and guests by demanding their constant sympathy 
attention and support. Lily Briscoe is a young single painter who, who befriends the Ramses on the Isle of Skye. Like Mr. Ramsey, Lily is plucked by fears that her work lacks worth. She begins a portrait of Mrs. Ramsey at the beginning of the novel but has trouble finishing it. The, the, the opinions of men like Charles Tansley, who insist that women cannot paint or write, threaten to undermine her confidence. Well, uh, Virginia Woolf's a touch of feminism here. James Ramsey, um, youngest son of the Ramsey's family, and James loves his mother deeply and feels a murderous um, antipathy towards his father for his behavior, with whom he must compare for Mrs. Ramsey's love and affection. At the beginning of the novel, Mr. Ramsey refuses the six-year-old James' request to go to the lighthouse, saying that the weather will be foul and not permitted ten years later. James finally makes the journey with his father and his sister, Kim. By this time, he has grown into a willful and moody young man who has much in common with his father, whom he detests. Well, Paul Raleigh, a young friend of the Ramses who visit them on the Isle of Skye. Paul is a kind, impressionable young man who follows Mrs. Ramsay's wishes in marrying Minta Doyle. Minta is a flighty young ma woman who visits the Ramses on the Isle of Skye. And she marries Paul Raleigh at Mrs. Ramsay's wishes. Well, Charles Tansley is quite a character, a young philosopher and pupil of Mr. Ramsey, who stays with the Ramsey on the Isle of Skye to complete his dissertation. Tansley is a prickly and unpleasant man who, who harbors deep insecurities regarding his humble background. He often insults other people, particularly women such as Lily, whose talent and accomplishments he constantly calls into question. His bad behavior, like Mr. Ramsey's, is motivated by his need for reassurance. William Banks is a uh, botanist and old friend of the Ramsey's who stays on the Isle of Skye. Banks is a kind and mellow man whom Mrs. Ramsey hopes will marry Lily Briscoe. Although he never marries her, Banks and Lily remain close friends until the end. Augustus Carmichael is an opium-using poet who visits the Ramses on the Isle of the Sky. Carmichael um, languishes in literary obscurity until his, his um, verse becomes popular during the war. Andrew, the oldest of the Ramses' son. Andrew is a competent, independent young man and he looks forward to a career as a mathematician. Jasper, one of the Ramses' son, Jasper, to his mother's charge and enjoys soothing birds. Roger, one of the Ramses' son, Roger is wild and adventurous like his sister Nancy. Prue, the oldest Ramses girl, a beautiful young woman, Mrs. Ramses delights in contemplating Prue's marriage, which she believes will be blissful. Rose Ramsey, one of the Ramsey's daughters. Rose has a talent for making things beautiful. She arranges the fruit for her mother's dinner party and picks out her mother's jewelry. Nancy is Ramsey's daughter. Uh, Nancy accompanies Paul Raleigh and Minta Doyle on their trip to the beach. Like her brother Roger, she's a wild adventurer. Cam, one of the Ramses' daughter too, as a young girl, Cam is mischievous and she sails with James and Mr. Ramsey to the lighthouse in the novel's final section. Mr. Magnip, an elderly woman who takes care of the Ramses' house on the Isle of Skye, restoring it after ten years of abandonment during the end after World War I. McAllister, the fisherman who accompanies the Ramses to the lighthouse. McAllister relates stories of shipwreck and maritime and maritime adventure to Mr. Ramsey and compliments James on his handling of the boat while James lands it at the lighthouse.
And McAllister's boy um, is, is his son. He rose, James came, and Mr. Ramsey to the lighthouse in the end. And this was all about the character. So, so far we could understand uh, the score story's contextual background, the plot summary line, and the characters list. We have gone through these things to make ourselves ready to step into the themes and uh, help us recall what we studied regarding to the lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. Well, um, time is a very important theme in the lighthouse. Um, it is not experienced conventionally into the lighthouse and that is the most important thing uh, attached with the use of the writing technique stream of consciousness by Wolf. Instead time is anchored in certain select moments which completely distorts it from the, from the way a clock experiences time. Time is measured as it is experienced by certain people which infuses select moments with incredible importance and duration. In other parts of the novel, ten years is covered in about a dozen pages. Time is there for both, um, elongated and compressed. Well, the transiness of life and work is, um, it carries significance as far as themes are concerned into the lighthouse, Mr. Ramsey and Mrs. Ramsey take completely different approaches to life. He relies on his intellect while she depends on her emotions. But they share the knowledge that the world around them is transient, that nothing lasts forever. Mr. Ramsey reflects that even the most enduring of reputations such as Shakespeare's are doomed to eventual oblivion. This realization accounts for the bitter aspects of his character, frustrated by the inevitable demise of his own body of work and envious of the few gen geniuses who will outlast him, he plots to found a school of philosophy that argues that the world is designed for the average, unadorned man for the lifetime in the tube rather than for the rare immortal writer. Mrs. Ramsey is, a, is as keenly aware as her husband of the passage of time and of mortality. She, recon, she recoils, for instance, at the notion of James go, growing into an adult, registers the world's many dangers, and knows that no one, not even her husband, can protect her from them. However, her reactions to this knowledge is markedly different from her husband's. And that shows us, uh, us the difference of their approaches. Whereas Mr. Ramsey is bowed by the weight of his own demise, Mrs. Ramsey is fueled with the need to make precious and memorable whatever time she has on earth. Such crafted moments, she reflects, offer the only hope of something that endures. Now, the next important theme that I would want to discuss is art as a means of preservation. Well, art is seen as a mean, means of preservation not only by Virginia Woolf but almost all of the writers of 20th century and we have recently discussed James Joyce for the same thing. In the face of an existence that is inherently without order or meaning, Mr. and Mrs. Ramsey employ different strategies for making their lives significant. Mr. Ramsey devotes himself to his progression through the course of human thought, while Mrs. Ramsey cultivates memorable experiences from social interactions. Neither of these strategies, however, proves an adequate means of preserving one's experience. After all, Mr. Ramsey fails to obtain the philosophical understanding he so desperately desires, and Mrs. Ramsey Mrs. Ramsey's life, though filled with moments that have the shine and resilience of Ruby's ends, only Lily Briscoe finds a way to preserve her experience, and that way is through her art. Mr. Ramsey ad devotes himself to his progression through the course of human thought, while Mrs. Ramsey cultivates memorable experiences from social interactions. That's their way, their different ways of preserving arts. After all, Ramses failed to obtain the philosophical understanding um, he so desperately desires and Mrs. Ramses' life, though filled with moments and 
that we know that the final, the, the, the conclusive um, point that Virginia makes here is that art stands to be the ultimate um, phenomenon that holds the, um, that preserves the um, beauty of life. As Lily begins her portrait of Mrs. Ramsay at the beginning of the novel, Wolf notes the scope of the project. Lily means to order and connect elements that have no necessary relation in the world. Hatches and houses and mothers and children. By the end of the novel, ten years later, Lily finishes the painting she started, which stands as a moment of clarity, wrested from confusion. Art is perhaps the only hope of um, surety in a world destined and determined to change. For while mourning Mrs. Ramsey's death and painting on the lawn, Lily reflects that nothing says all changes but not words, not pains. Nothing stays, all changes. Well, another theme that comes up and we have had a discussion in detail is of the subjective, subjective nature of reality. Um, toward the end of the novel, Lily reflects that in order to see Mrs. Ramsey clearly, to understand her character completely, she would need at least 50 pairs of eyes. Only then would she be uh, privy to every possible angle and wants that she keeps. And that's a pretty big statement. The truth according to this assertion rests in the accumulation of different, even opposing vantage points. Wolf's technique in structuring the story mirrors Lily's assertion. She's committed to creating a sense of the world that not only depends upon the private perceptions of her characters, but is also nothing more than the accumulation of those perceptions. To try to reimagine the story as told from a single character's perspective or in the tradition of the Victorian novelist from the author's perspective is to realize the radical scope and difficulty of Wolf's project. Another theme is the, retro, the, restorate, the restorative effects of beauty. These restorative effects of beauty at the beginning of the novel, both Mr. Ramsey and Lily Briscoe are drawn out of moments of irritation by the image of extreme beauty. However, the image in both cases is a vision of Mrs. Ramsey, who she um, sits reading with, uh, as she sits reading with James, is a sight powerful enough to incite repute and rapture in William Banks. Beauty retains this soothing effect throughout the novel. Something as, as trifling as a large but very beautiful arrangement of fruit can, for a moment, assuage the discomfort of the guest at Mrs. Ramsay's dinner party. Lily later compl complicates the no notion of beauty as um, restorative by suggesting that beauty has the um, unfortunate consequence of simplifying the truth. Well, her impression of Mrs. Ramsay, she believes, is compromised by a determination to view her as beautiful and to smooth over her complexities and faults. Nevertheless, Lily continues on her quest to still or freeze a moment from life and make it beautiful. Although the vision of an isolated moment is necessarily incomplete, it is lasting and as such endlessly seductive to her. Well, themes of memory and the past. Well, because time is such a distorted thing to into the lighthouse and memory and the past are a vital part of the character's present. When a single moment is given the tenth degree, every significant aspect of the moment is interrogated. It's also important to note that a lot of important information is transferred via character's memories, which makes sense, since in real time the novel only tru truly covers one day only one day. Well, the theme of love is, uh, takes several different forms in the text. Lasting love that's still flawed, 
love that casts a glow on everyone else, love that doesn't last. Friendly love, familial love, admiring love, love as an intellectual topic, etc., etc. But the main point is that love is not the sort of all-consuming force you see in Anna Karenina. Love into the lighthouse is pretty tame and usually turns out to be love for Mrs. Ramsey eventually. And theme of gender? Um, well, it's Wolf novel and you cannot deny the theme of gender. Gender figures in all the chauvinistic remarks that the men make and the protective tone towards men that Mrs. Ramsey takes or Lily takes. Also, Mrs. Ramsey is held up as an ideal of womanhood. Lily Briscoe deviates from this ideal because she is not interested in marriage or confronting and sympathizing with every male character in the novel. Um, this uh, gives us way to step into the theme of marriage. Mrs. Ramsey's favorite time pass, I would say, really wants she really wants everyone to get married, particularly women. She herself is in is in a marriage that at least one character holds up as an ideal. Interestingly enough, her marriage to Mr. Ramsey is actually the one only marriage we see in the novel, and that lasts till the end. We do, however, hear about by Lily's memories that how the Raleigh marriage which Mrs. Ramsey had encouraged so much worked out. It was unsuccessful. Well, theme of manipulation, Mrs. Ramsey can get people to marry because she has excellent powers of manipulation. She can make any man feel like the strongest, most manly man ever. Aside from manipulation, Mrs. Ramsey is very well attuned to people's desire and needs. She knows how to deal with delicate egos, and which comes in handy because her husband can be rather demanding when it comes to ego stroking. Theme of admiration is another of tactics used by Mrs. Ramsey. Mr. and Mrs. Ramsey are both well admired in their respective fields. Mr. Ramsey tends to be followed around by young philosophy students who admire his work and although Mrs. Ramsey shuns admiration, most people admire her beauty and grace and she enjoys that. Theme of identity, Mrs. Ramsey in particular is very conscious of her identity constantly interrogating herself and her character. Though apparently mo the writing shows that she shuns admiration, however, we find that um, her urge for her identity is another form of admiration that she keeps for herself. She adopts a very subordinate position when in her interactions with other people, which means that her own true self is frequently stifled, or she likes keeping herself in low profile. Well, but good news, when there are no people around to ponder to, her own private self has room to explore. Lily also contemplates her identity quite often. Theme of victory. Victory into the lighthouse most frequently occurs over life, but occasionally victory is scored over other people as well. The main point, however, is that victory occurs beneath the surface into the lighthouse and often in social interactions. Mr. Ramsey, Mrs. Ramsey scores a victory by not saying, uh, but not, not, not confessing that she loves Mr. Ramsey. Yet Mr. Ramsey has never asked her to say it. On the surface, they have a perfectly civilized conversation. Victory and defeat occur in the nuances of interaction not in the overt way that, say, a world war encompasses victory and defeat. And then theme of friendship. Friendship plays a secondary role to love in the novel, but for Lily Briscoe, friendship is the most important thing she has ever truly wanted from a man, and that she keeps and maintains till the end. The other friendship we see uh, retrospectively is between Mr. Ramsey and Mr. Banks. Well, but that failed. Theme of laws and order. Mrs. Ramsey is extremely attuned to harmony and disord and discord, and she also takes on the task of creating as much harmony as possible. This is a double-edged sword because she frequently sacrifices truth in order to preserve harmony. She adheres to a certain idea ideal of the world in which everyone is united and everything is at peace. And then 
Um, they, these were the themes that we need to discuss um, in regard to, to the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. However, these themes are, are strengthened with the use of some motives and symbols used by the writer. Let's have a quick look, look on them to see if they can help us understand some of the things that we missed out. Well, a very strong motive used by the writer is the, the differing behavior of men and women that strengthen the theme of feminism and gender by Woolf. As Lily Briscoe suffers through Charles Tansley's boorish opinions about women in art, she reflects that human relations are worst between men and women. Indeed, given the extremely opposite ways in which men and women behave th throughout the novel, this difficulty is no wonder. The dynamic between these sexes and genders is best understood by considering the behavior of Mr. and Mrs. Ramsey. Their constant conflict has less to do with divergent philosophies. Indeed, they both acknowledge and are motivated by the same fear of mortality than with the way they process that fear. Men, Mrs. Ramsey reflects in the opening pages of the novel, bow to it. Given her rather traditional notions of gender rules, she um, excuses her husband, Mrs. Ramsey, uh, her be husband's behavior as inevitable, asking how men can be expected to settle the political and economic business of nations and not suffer doubts. This understanding attitude places on women the responsibility for soothing men's damaged egos and achieving some kind of harmony, even if temporary, with them. Lily Briscoe, who as a single woman represents a social or older, more rad radial and latent than Mrs. Ramsey's, resists this duty but ultimately caves into it. Well, but in another um, way and I would say in another channel, if not the channel of love, but the channel of friendship. And then the use of brackets, parentheses, in time pa passes, brackets surround the few sentences recounting the deaths of Prue and Andrew Ramsey. While in the lighthouse, brackets surround the sentences comprising chapters. Each set of sentences in brackets in the earlier section contains violence, death and the destruction of potential. The short, stabbing accounts um, accentuates the brutality of these events. But in chapter 6 of The Lighthouse, the purpose of the brackets changes from indicating violence and death to violence and potential survival. Whereas in time passes, the brackets surround Prue's death in, in childbirth and Andrew's perishing in war in the lighthouse. They surround the... Um, Mutilated but alive still body of a fish. Well, um, symbols in the lighthouse are again devices used by Virginia Woolf to strengthen his thematic structure and goals of the novel. Um, lying across the bay and meaning something different and intimately personal to each character, the lighthouse is at once an accessible, illuminating and infinitely interpretable object. As a destination from which the novel takes its title, the lighthouse suggests that the, that the destinations that seem um, surest are most unobtainable. Just as Mr. Ramsey is certain of his wife's love for him and aims to hear her speak words to that end in the window, Mrs. Ramsey finds these words impossible to say. These failed attempts to arrive at some sort of solid ground like Lily's first try at painting Mr. Ramsey's or uh, Mrs. Ramsey's attempt to see Paul and Minta married result only in more attempts further exclusions than, rather than rest. The lighthouse stands as a potent symbol of this lack of attainability. James arrives only to realize that it is not at all the missed, shrewded destination of his childhood. Instead, he is made to reconcile two competing and contradictory images of the tower. How it appeared to him when he, s he was a boy and how it appears to him now that he is a man. He decides that both of these images contribute to the essence of the lighthouse, that nothing is ever only one thing, 
a sentiment that echoes the novel's determination to arrive at truth through varied and contradictory vantage points. Lily's painting is another important symbol that highlights some of the themes. Um, her painting represents a struggle against gender convention. Represented by Charles Tainsley's statement that women can't paint or write. Lily's desire to express Mrs. Ramsey's sense as a wife and mother in the painting mimics the impulse among modern women to know and understand intimately the gendered experiences of the women who came before them. Lily's composition attempts to discover and comprehend Mrs. Ramsay's beauty, just as, as Wolf's construction of Mrs. Ramsay's character reflects her attempts to access and portray her own mother. The painting also represents dedication to a feminine artistic vision, expressed through Lily's anxiety over showing it to Mr. Banks. In deciding that completing the painting, regardless of what happens to it, is the most important thing, Lily makes the choice to establish her own artistic voice. In the end, she decides that her vision depends on balance and synthesis, how to bring together desperate, uh, disparate things in harmony. In this respect, her project mirrors Wolf's writing which synthesizes the perceptions of her many characters to come to a balanced and truthful portrait of the world. The Ramses House, the Ramses house is a stage where Wolf and her characters um, explain their beliefs and observations. During her dinner party, Mrs. Ramses sees her house display her own inner notions of shabbiness and her inability to preserve beauty. Where in the time passes section, the, the ravages of war and destruction and the passage of time are reflected in the condition of the house rather than in the emotional development or observable aging of the characters. The house stands in for the collective consciousness of those who stay in it. At times the characters long to escape it while at other times it serves as refuge. From the dinner party to the journey to the lighthouse, Wolf shows the house from every angle and its structure and contents mirror the interior of the characters who inhibit it. The sea. References to the sea appear throughout the novel, broadly the ever-changing, ever-moving wave parallel, the constant forward moment of time and the changes it brings. Wolf describes the sea lovingly and beautifully, but her most evocative depiction of it points to its violence and the potential to destruction. As a force that brings destruction has the power to de de decimate islands and as Mr. Ramsey reflects, eats away the ground we stand on. The sea is a powerful reminder of the um, impermanence and delicacy of human life and, and, and accomplishments. The boar skull after her dinner party, Mrs. Ramsey retires upstairs to find the children wide awake, bothered by the boar skull that hangs on the nursery wall. The presence of the skull acts as a disturbing reminder that death is always at end at hand, even or perhaps especially during life's most blissful moments. The fruit basket that is arranged by Rose um, for her mother's dinner party that serves to draw the, the party goers out of their private suffering and unite them. Although Augustus Carmichael and Mrs. Ramsay appreciate the arrangement differently, he rips a bloom from it. She refuses to disturb it. The pair is brought harmoniously, it briefly, if briefly, together. The basket testifies both to the frozen quality of beauty that Lily describes and to beauty's seductive and soothing quality as well. 
Well, I hope by now, after discussing about the story, plot, contextual background, characters, themes, motifs, symbols, you are in a position to answer any type of critical questions based on the story. Let's have a look at some of the questions which are important for you to prepare and uh, prepare again for your examination. Uh, what are some of the main symbols into the lighthouse and what do they signify? How does Wolf's use of symbolism advance her thematic goals? I just uh, discussed this question in detail by touching upon all the important symbols. Although I may not have taken all the symbols in, in my discussion, um, but you can uh, because there are many minor symbols in the story as well. Um, and we have discussed them in detail during our detailed discussion based on the novel. Um, although I've touched upon the major ones, but still there are minors to catch on. So this question I've already answered. If To the Lighthouse is a novel about the search for meaning in life, how do the characters conduct their search? Are they successful in finding an answer? Well, let me give you some suggestions to answer this question. Although all the characters engage themselves in the same quest for meaningful experience, the three main characters have vastly different approaches, Mr. Ramsey, Mrs. Ramsey and Lily. Mr. Ramsey's search is intellectual. He hopes to understand the world and his play and his place in it by working at philosophy and reading books. Mrs. Ramsey, on the other hand, conducts her search through intuition rather than intellect. She relies on uh, social traditions such as marriage and dinner parties to structure her experience. Lily, uh, on the other hand, tries to create meaning in her life through her painting, art. She seeks to unify desperate, uh, disparate elements in a harmonious whole. Well, if you extend on these points, you'll be able to find and compose a wonderful answer. While these characters experience um, varying degrees of success in their quest for meaning in life, none arrives at a re revelation that fulfills the search or that makes it or makes us call it successful. As an old man, Mr. Ramsey continues to be as, as tortured, um, uh, tortured by this aspect of his own mortality as he is in his youth. Mrs. Ramsey achieves moments in which life seems filled with meaning, but as her dinner party makes clear, they are terribly short-lived. Lily too manages to wrest a moment from life and lend to it meaning and order. Her painting is a small, um, I would say, testament to that struggle, but as she reflects while pondering the meaning of her life, there are no great revelations, but only little daily miracles that one, if lucky, can fish out of the dark. Important question, compare and contrast Mr. and Mrs. Ramsey's character. Well, this compare and contrast can be for several reasons. However, first you need, one thing that you need to do is that keep a kind of a log where you can uh, point down their comparative um, characteristics. How are they alike? How are they different? You need to have answers to substantiate always um, when, when you get into any kind of comparison for any reason to answer any kind of question based on that. Uh, I have uh, discussed the characters of Mr. and Mrs. Ramsey, uh, so I am skipping this bit to move on and see what we have next. Well, the contribution of Regina Wolf's to the writing technique, the stream of consciousness, although I've discussed this many times during our detailed talk as well as now, but I will again touch upon it because that's one a significant, significant question that comes um, uh, with reference to Virginia Woolf's work. The first utterance when we say the term of modernism, we remind of Virginia Woolf with her original use of the stream of consciousness in her works. Well, if consciousness is related to the mind of a person, then what makes it so important to be used as the self-consciousness? The self-consciousness resembles a river or waterfall or represent the flow of thoughts that, and opinions that are hidden in your own mind. We all have our secret opinions that nobody knows in a way that every human being has the same characteristic feature in terms of pondering from their mind and getting to know only this person. Virginia Woolf in this point has a huge contribution to reflect the nature of human effectivity and she is the English writer who is the, who is, uh, who is the pioneer in this field and who presents stream of consciousness writing at its purest form. 
But among the steam of consciousness, novelists in England, Virginia Woolf is the most important name. She realized that it is not enough to express only outside reality of reg regarding as the use of one technique. She found limited and restricted to use only the conventions and traditions of writing style. Hence, she created the concept of this technique to reveal the inner side of personality with experimental forms in her novels. And that makes her writing quite unique, the writing style I am referring to. She shows not only the mirror of reality integrated, integrating with the society, but also the picture of people's mind. We, see, we easily see the most striking examples of how Wolf portrayed the concept of this um, stream of consciousness. Ev uh, every detail in her great novels like Mrs. Dalloway or To the Lighthouse. There is definitely some form or pattern and some inner unity in these novels. Of course, the influence of Joyce and Bergson is also considerable for uh, this technique, use of this technique in Virginia's writing. Her essential method is her own. That is why we find that the novelist is playing the role of a central intelligence in her outstanding novels and is constantly busy organizing the material and illuminating it by her own um, comments. In fact, Regina Wolf um, was a great experimenter. She experimented with many methods and gave to the stream of consciousness technique turns and finally achieved her complete success in Mrs. Dalloway and to the lighthouse. Um, she's interested in both the inner and outer life simultaneously and that makes her writing different from other followers of this writing style. However, as we know from her stories, Wolf is more interested in the inner than in the outer life of a character. Um, psychoanalyst, psychological analysis of the characters is, a, is one major theme of 20th century. So this was all about today's talk and the today's talk was based on um, the comprehensive discussion on To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf and we have discussed in detail all the aspects related to the story starting from its contextual background bringing in the summary outline, characters, themes, motives, symbols and in the end we also uh, were able to discuss some of the critical questions. Well, I hope by now you'll be ready to um, appear for your examinations. However, still if you find something confusing, you can always go back to the detailed discussion based on the novel um, in the series Streamline Lecture. This was all for today. I'll see you in the next lecture. That will be the last uh, lecture for the revision series as well. See you next time. Allah Hafiz.